How did I possibly know that the market would reverse from the 60s after selling off for 15 minutes straight and bounce back up? I'm gonna break down the chart today and talk about this idea. This is a question that I had in the community and I wanna answer it because I feel like it's a really good lesson and let's talk about it right here in this video. What's going on guys? This morning the CPI numbers came out. We had a huge move down, back up, all around, crazy move pre-market. And then at open, the market just continued to sell off. We were basically red, red, red on the three minute chart at open. For about 15 minutes straight, we had nothing but selling at open. And that right there is always kind of something to think about. When the market's just continuously going lower and lower, you gotta think at some point there's gonna be a push back up to retest, a retest of a level, something. It's gotta kinda push back up, do a little bit of consolidation before making that move lower. You can see pulling up the three minute chart here, this was the move that I'm talking about. Basically at open, we went from the 4000s, we moved all the way down here to the 59s. Now, why did I think it was gonna reverse at this level? We talked about it on the live stream, the idea of pushing back up at this point. Basically, there's a couple things. There's a couple things going on here. What I would be looking at here is we know that we had that low after the numbers down there at the 54s. So I would have thought, okay, if we're gonna continue lower and lower that we would get right through that 54 level, kind of get down into an actual support level, kind of like down there into the 40s on the ES, there was support here. If this was gonna continue lower and lower, I would have looked to see this kind of break below that low of that candle right there after the CPI numbers came out. But really, you can see how it started to slow down. Overall, momentum started to slow down. The MACD started slowing down there as well. So momentum started slowing down to the downside there. We kind of filled this area that was like, I would say, uh, like a kind of almost like a fair value gap, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? It's almost like a fair value gap at that point. Kind of just this area of nothingness, right? Like there's not a lot of structure there. We kind of moved down into that and now we're down here at the 60s. We actually did have a fair value gap on the 15 minute candle there, and I was expecting either just kind of a push back up into this level, up there to the 80s, 70s, into the 80s, and then that would have been the move back down. You know, I didn't expect it just to go lower and lower. I wasn't gonna short at the 60s. We talked about that during the live stream. I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna short here at the 60s. I'm just not gonna do it. I know what's gonna happen the minute that I short, this thing's gonna rip back up, and that's exactly what ended up happening. So we got the bounce off the bottom there at the 60s, we push back up. Now this is the moment, right? Like this right here is the moment of truth. If we can put in a higher low, well then we should expect kind of a push back up and try to retest the opening area, and then we have the high up there at the 20s. Now if you zoom out, you can see, guess what? We're back up there almost to the 20s again. So that was kind of telling to see just that price action alone. When I see these big moves down like that, I expect at least kind of a little move back up before making that move down. So it's not that I thought for sure the market would reverse back to the highs, but I just didn't think we were just gonna keep going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, especially after the CPI numbers came out and kind of where we are with the overall market. We broke out recently of the overall trend on the daily as well from the downside, kind of bouncing back up above the 3900s. So I know we're kind of in a little bit of a bull move here. There's momentum in the market. People are starting to think that there's a bottom, you know, kind of found a bottom. So overall, looking more towards being bullish here. And then that big move down there right there, you kind of, well, that's what you're looking for. I mean, this is how it would look, right? If this moves down, it would then push up here and then move down again. It's not just simply, I mean, I guess it, you know, it can, obviously it can just keep going lower and lower, but I mean, that's a pretty drastic line to the downside, right? Like that's a pretty drastic move to the downside. My overall intuition as a trader is that this thing wants to push back up. If I wanted to get short, well, I'd want to be shorting right here, right at the 70s. We talked about during the live stream as well, kind of pushing back up into that 80 EMA, 21 EMA there on the chart. Another thing that we had going on, look at this. And guess what? We had the SPY pivot right there. That SPY pivot was right where we reversed at. So we bounced off that 392.70 level right where that SPY pivot was, and we pushed back up. We had that pivot right there at the 394s, another pivot there at the 396. Look how we have interacted with these pivots. People say these pivots are, they don't work, blah, 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 whatever. 
but look at how we interacted. We bounced off that pivot perfectly. We got through that pivot. We pulled back, turned it into support. We got the breakout, and then we got stuck here from 10 o'clock till about 1040 at that pivot right there at the 396.86. So clearly you can see these pivots do work. We had to push up to that pivot there, pull back. We got below this pivot at open. We pulled back to this pivot and then ding, ding, ding. So the pivot also was pretty important to have there support wise, knowing that pivot was there. We had a pivot also at the 70s on the ES and there was a pivot below us at the 52s on the ES as well. And you can see here on the 15 minute chart, like I said, that fair value gap this is something that I've kind of been messing around with lately, just having it on the chart. And it makes sense, right? Like this big 15 minute candle right here, there's that big move down. We kind of just broke right through that support there. We moved down here and it creates this area of just constant selling, constant selling. And the market needs buyers and sellers to move, right? The market needs to kind of find liquidity. It needs to find where the buyers are. It needs to find where the sellers. So once the sellers get exhausted here on this big move down, you know, I'm thinking, like I said, kind of push back up into the 70s here, 80s, at least kind of make it up to about, you know, the middle of this big move down on the 15 minute chart. So we basically push back up into here and then we would turn down like that would be our short entry. But if we look, what's interesting is this candle right here pushed back up, it denied, basically invalidated that fair value gap right there. So basically invalidated that FVG, the fair value gap, it pushed back up. And look at how it ended up playing as kind of the next setup, the next breakout here. As we push back up, we kind of then pull back into this area that's fair value gap, right? The idea basically is if we're gonna pull back, we wanna kind of hold that fair value gap area. We wanna hold that as support. And then we wanna get that push back up for that next leg higher. And overall, a great move kind of pulling back into there. I think if you look on the fibs as well on this move, you'll probably see that there was, yeah, 618 right there on the fibs, 618 there. So that's something to think about. And then if we look at the three minute chart again, we put the fibs on here. I wanna look at this as well from the bottom of that move to the top of that move. Oh, well, if we look at the fibs on, and if we look at the Fibonacci retracement here on the three minute chart, that would basically give us this idea of kind of pulling back here into the 786s is a little bit deeper that's the thing, right? You really gotta think about these pullbacks. Like, are these pullbacks actually like, are we crashing down or are we just kind of pulling back and retesting those areas, finding if the sellers and buyers are there, where the sellers and buyers are, and look at that push back up. So very interesting kind of morning action, you know, to push up their big pre-market. It's kind of like, I think a lot of times, a lot of that pre-market action that we get, it's not like set in stone, right? Like a lot of times when the market opens, it kind of wants to retest these levels that the pre-market areas kind of test or they go up and down based on, you know, the pre-market levels kind of pulling back, making sure that there's enough buyers kind of down here and then rip, we're back up here, you know, the shorts get squeezed and it's off to the races. So that's kind of my overall thought process on, you know, what I'm looking at on this type of move down, like why I thought I didn't want to short at the 60s and why I thought this would be a push back up into the 70, 80 area. Did I know it would push all the way back to 4,000s? No, obviously I did not know that, but I thought for sure that we would at least kind of push back up to that 21 EMA there, and then we'd roll off again. We wouldn't just constantly just keep going do, 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 lower and lower. We'd have to kind of push back up at some point. And again, you know, really, I think this is a great example of, I see people talking about on the live stream when we were live, you know, that Patrick Whelan kind of set up breakout. One thing that I think really makes this move even stronger when you see this setup here is look at how the price action starts getting tighter and tighter, right? We had kind of this push up into that resistance there. We then had a dip down to the 80s. We push up here, you know, these lines, these kind of zigzags are getting tighter. They're getting smaller and smaller zigzags, right? This price action kind of pushing up, testing, pushing up, testing, but that we're just getting tighter and tighter off that 80 level. And then look where we broke out, how tight we were there on that. So we kind of turned that 88 area into support. We got really tight on the price action. Like you can see how tight that price action right there is and we're trying to push back up. So that's really giving you a great overall entry in terms of risk and reward. And look at that push up there to the 15s. So from the 90s to the 15s, you know, that's a 25 handle move. You're making lots of profit with that type of setup. The NAC MACD was bullish. Everything was kind of lining up there. And well, we had that pivot point up there at the 399s as well. And on this, ES, we had a pivot there at the 10s that we knew about as well right there at the 10s. So 
that really is a good thing to see. You want to see this price action getting tighter and tighter. Like you want this kind of, okay, we dip, we push that up these little areas that were bouncing back and getting are getting tighter and tighter. And then we finally get that breakout. And that's what we want to see. MACD got the pivots, everything all lining up beautifully. So that's kind of my overall thought process and giving you guys a look inside the mind of Patrick Whelan. Let's go.